So, Exodus, huh? They're an interesting little thing, aren't they? I realize I'm starting to be a bit of an object show community origin, so I think I actually have to put into perspective how wild the concept of the Exodus are. These are characters we get extremely hyped to see when they show up. Characters that we eliminated in pre-split. Like, they're there and it's our fault. The public opinions on pretty much every Exodus has shifted dramatically towards the positive. Even Robody. And I'm pretty happy about that. Because there's one of these contestants in particular that, as some of you may know, Raisley appears. Oh, oh my god, the accent! Where's Raisley? Yes, yes, yes! I absolutely love and have loved ever since I started watching this show in 2019. Quote. Bracelet is a silicon bracelet, a loud, hyperactive girl who loves, and we mean loves, Ice Cube. Bracelet uses her ability to create signs to encourage Ice Cube and to let her know that she's a special chunk of frozen H2O. Bracelet likes Ice Cube so much that she'll battle anyone who doesn't share in her enthusiasm. To this day, Ice Cube has not acknowledged Bracelet once. As the certified number one Bracelet fan, as voted by Twitter, people ask me all the time. Why? Out of any of the gigantic cast of characters this show has to offer, why is Bracelet your favorite? What makes her so special? What checkboxes does she tick over more complex characters that have plenty more screen time? And usually my answer boils down to the same few key points. I like your characters, I like underdogs, I love her personality, it's hard to explain, yada yada yada. Okay, while these points are true for me, I don't think like these points will be modifying anyone else's tier list. Now, if I want to convince anyone that's still not sure of who their favorite Exeter is, what I really need is at least 21 minutes and 12 seconds to fully explore Bracelet. Now, I know what some of you may be saying, but Nacho, not only is Bracelet a super annoying character, all Bracelet does in the show is be obsessed with Ice Cube. She's as deep as the kitty's pool. Well, to that, let me be very clear. If you aren't the biggest fan of Bracelet's core gimmick, which is being an Ice Cube fangirl, to each their own. Personally, I think Bracelet's hyperactive personality, low raspy voice, and obsession for Ice Cube are key traits that make her unique and great. However, there is something else I'm trying to make very clear in this video, so here's my thesis statement. Bracelet is more complex of a character than you might think. I've been wanting to make this video for years. I've always wanted Bracelet to rejoin the game, and there's clues that hint that maybe, maybe an Exeter will rejoin next episode. If anyone is joining, it should be me! And they can't be late. If there's a boat and I don't do anything about it, I'll never forgive myself. So, without further ado, here's why Bracelet is my idol. Enjoy the video and subscribe for no more videos. No, seriously, I release two videos per year and they can barely qualify as videos. If you're somehow watching this, that means a real miracle occurred for this to come out. <laughs> um, anyways. Let's get introductions out of the way. Bracelet first appeared in BFDA 14, premiere February 1st, 2011, as Bracelet, recommended by Hasbro33. She was lucky enough to be picked by Jack and Jellify for the boat to join BFDIA in 2013, which cemented her fate because everyone picked for this boat will eventually join BFV on its premiere in 2017. Bracelet made her gimmick very clear before even getting a single second of screen time. She's a super fan of Ice Cube. She cheers her on as she's doing... Whatever this is, gets in an argument with Clock. Why are you condoning Ice Cube's brutal abuse? Gets in an argument with Fanny. Wow! And gets in an argument with Fries. I, I, I hate you! Well, strong start. Yeah. When the contest starts, Bracelet has fled to join their team, but is promptly rejected by Lollipop since their team is already full. This team already has eight members. This is the saddest scene in the entire show. Bracelet competes in three episodes and, after Gelatin makes Bombi explode, she gets eliminated in Team Ice Cube's cake and steak ceremony in a landslide boat. 
Never mind, this is the saddest scene in the entire show. From that point onwards, the only times we get to see Bracey is alongside the other eliminated contestants in BFE 10, 11, 16, Teapot 1, 7, 9, 11, and soon enough, 12. And no, 30 doesn't count, she's merely an illusion created by Four's mind. Okay, that's what you do know. Now here's for what you don't know. Let's address some of the common misconceptions that people who have a distaste for bracelet seem to hold. Here's a popular one. Bracelet character is boring, slash filler, slash not deep, slash any similar variant of this adjective. All she does is fangle for Ice Cube and nothing else. Now, obviously, Bracity won't be Bracity if it wasn't for an Ice Cube obsession. I love Icy so much my bones hurt. In fact, I'd like to start out this argument with an opinion. I actually think that gimmick is exactly what makes Bracity so interesting and full of potential. This simple gimmick opens the door for really awesome art and conflict ideas. I strongly believe the writers have plenty of opportunities to use Bracity. She's not filler. Let me ask you this. Do you believe Lai is filler? If your answer is no, let me remind you that overall, Lai's influence in the actual competition of BFB has been close to none. Matter of fact, I'd argue she had less influence than Bracity in the contest side of things. Now, I ask again, is Lai filler? If your answer is still no, then you're correct because Lai adds substance to the show, just like every other character including Bracelet. Sure, Lai seems to be less of a joke character than Bracelet does, but I don't think that really changes anything. Comedic relief characters can be pretty great, but also, and I'll defend my point, Bracelet can be used and has been used for more than just comedic relief. To prove my point, let me paint you some possible scenarios for good art slash conflict slash scenes that BFDA could do with Bracelet. Take a seat. Though somewhat retconned, it's not hard to believe the BFDI official character guys claim that Ice Cube has yet to acknowledge Bracelet's existence. This does not mean Ice Cube literally doesn't know Bracelet exists, kinda hard to miss her presence after all, but rather it means she has not talked to her. And by proxy, Bracelet probably never had a conversation with Ice Cube either. Yeah, how crazy is that? Bracelet has never had a talk with Ice Cube? Hold on to that thought, because here's something crazier. How do you think a conversation between Bracity and Ice Cube will go? Ah, we're getting somewhere. We know for sure what Bracity thinks of Ice Cube, but what does Icy think of Bracity? That's a question that's mostly up for interpretation today, but I can't stress enough the potential there is for an arc, or a friendship, or even something we haven't seen before in the show which is huge. Will it be a repeat of Flock and Winner? Well, not really, because Bracelet is way different than Clock, and Ice Cube is different than Winner too. For Clock, first of all, he obviously doesn't have the same hyperactive, low personality as Bracelet. And secondly, we have an actual reason as to why he's a Winner fan. He said it himself. Way back at the start of Loser's career, Winner and Loser were a duo. At some point, Loser went solo and hit the mainstream, but Winner? Well, they just faded into obscurity. But only a true loser fan would know that. Meanwhile, Bracelet? Why does she like Ice Cube so much? What did Ice Cube do to gain such a devoted fan? Perhaps she can explain. Ah! Uh, here's all the fun facts about Ice Cube that I can think of! She's You're funny. going off script! And I mean, great. whatever. Just keep That's it? There's something more here. There's something we don't know about Bracelet. And you know what that means, our potential! <laughs> As for Winner, they're very open to Clock about their discomfort for his fanaticism. Well, Ice Cube... Mm, we have mixed signals. Actually, there's a good reason to believe she's conflicted about Bracelet. Ice Cube has been on all the mild spots of the spectrum when it comes to her opinion on her superfan. She's looked like a mix of pitiful and mildly uncomfortable in a few scenes. She's ignored her very obvious presence at times. But also, after Bracelet's elimination, and pay attention, because this is important, she did the running gag of having her mouth twitch. But instead of smiling like Fari did after Leafy's elimination, she frowned! Frowned! That's right, folks! I she was at least slightly sad to see Bracity go. And this is one of the biggest misconceptions of this potential relationship I've seen in this fandom. So many times have I read people claim that Ice Cube doesn't like Bracity or that she smiled in the scene instead of frown. Well, 
with the canon context clues we've had, the most likely possibility is that she doesn't know what to think of her. And that's super interesting. Let's recap. With Bracery obsessed with Ice Cube despite never having a conversation with her, and Ice Cube being conflicted and rather avoidant of her, but not necessarily because she dislikes her, I ask again, how do you think an interaction between these two yeah. characters will go? And better yet, if Bracer rejoin, how do you think their arc will go? One that spans more than one interaction, more than one episode, if they join the same team, how will that go? Hmm. Doesn't seem like that bland of a character anymore. It will do a lot with her. Here's another fun scenario to think of. Bray City personality is literally the perfect formula for an identity crisis arc to be thrown at it. Think about it. Who is she if not an Ice Cube fan? Yes, what some see as flaw, I see potential. So, hopefully I convince you that Bray City has the potential to be used in many creative ways. But I'm already sensing some of your thoughts. Let's address the next big concern. This doesn't really disprove my point. Bray City's character is literally only Ice Cube and nothing else. And to that I say... Are you sure? While yes, though Brace Lady's character is very much centered around Ice Cube and is an essential part of her, it's also important to understand that being obsessed over Ice Cube is not her only character trait, and some of you might have already realized this. Brace Lady has shown to appreciate other people that aren't Ice Cube, including herself, have some anger issues, be optimistic, be a good team subordinate, but also take the leader role herself if it's for the sake of the team. Most importantly though, if she has to concentrate on something that's not related to Ice Cube but that's good for her team, she'll focus. And the signals for these traits, though made more obvious by the recently released Depot 11, have been there since episode 1, believe it or not. Let's explore a little bit. BFV1, pretty Ice Cube centered until the contest starts, even names the team after her. Team Ice Cube all the way! But, even though she's not in Ice Cube's team, look who's in the background doing the challenge while half the team is arguing. Yeah, that's right, Brace Lady, alongside Barfback, Spongy, and Naily. And Ice Cube's not even safe yet! Ice Cube's chances are letting just decrease. BFV2, pretty straightforward. The entire team is licking the jawbreaker, including Brace Lady, and though she does lament Ice Cube wasn't inside, she still have her team out. And BFV3, though she wasn't in Team Ice Cube's transformation scene, the team is mostly off screen, so it's not nuts to assume that Brace Lady was helping out her team. Plus, there's many scenes that hint at how gelatin made them lose by making Bombi explode, not Brace Lady. Let's use Bombi to launch ourselves out. It's okay, Bombi. You're only a little bit exploded. What the hell happened here? And to prove she does care about herself too, I don't know about you, but in BFV4, she doesn't exactly look thrilled to be eliminated. Well, until she realized that I stopped chances of letting just increase. And ironically, many interpret the scene as proof that Bracity cares about Ice Cube and Ice Cube only, not even caring about herself. When I think it actually proves quite the opposite. Like seriously, Ice Cube's chances of winning increasing because of her elimination? They increase the moment her team gained safety in the previous challenge. Bray City issues inhaling huge amounts of coke cube during this scene. So, despite what Gady says right after her elimination, Wow, Bray City went out strong. It's clear she, she didn't, didn't care. care about what others thought of her. I think this depot scene proves her otherwise. Stop! I'm just gonna leave if you all keep fighting! I like that. What? Bray City clearly looks pretty sad when Stapy replies with that, thinking that he'd rather have her out of the group. And why is that? It's because, Gady, she does care about what other people think of her. And who knows, maybe that scene in BFB4 simply showcased that she uses her infatuation for Ice Cube as a coping mechanism to fight that insecurity. Yes, fanaticism as a method to cope with her insecurities. Probably my biggest Bracelet theory, and I think it's a totally reasonable one. I don't think Bracelet is as influenced by Ice Cube as much as she could be. Just look at how she reacts when Loser comes off that jailbreak in BFV16. Oh my grip, Loser, I'm so happy you got eliminated because now we get to be buddies! But wait. Hold on, Bray City. Hadn't your opinion on Loser changed? I don't hate Loser! Ice Cube hates Loser. Come to think of it, Loser 
sucks. I don't think this is a writing mistake. I genuinely think this was written to showcase this about Bracity. Maybe she will hate Lucer if Lucer had a negative opinion about Ice Cube, because that opinion will be directly attacking the coping mechanism she's built. Am I looking too deep into these scenes? Who cares? Art is meant to be interpreted. Leave me alone. I'm not crazy. Oh. Embracity might be aware that the audience isn't too fond of her, but please do not tell Bracity what her BFE team thinks of her. Bunch of liars talking behind people's backs. Especially you, Gelatin. Like, this is a detail a lot of people missed. But after Bracity's elimination, Gelatin carelessly threw away all of her belongings in the dumpster. It's your new look. It's made out of abandoned trash we found lying around. For where did you get these so-called fortunes? Dumpster! And if that wasn't enough insult to injury, his team thank him for that! Huh? <laughs> why are you thanking him for throwing Bracery's stuff away? Like, why are you all smiling, you ungrateful bunch of jerks? She helped you guys every challenge, got her out, then you glued together her stuff! to win the previous challenge before Gelatin threw it in the dumpster and you're thanking him for doing it? Why? What'd she do? Okay, I think you guys get it. Insecurity, coping mechanism, whatever, let's move on. Let's change topics. Let's talk about her instincts to take leadership or encourage the team. While Teapot 9 had hints of that part of her personality, with her interrupting the Exodus arguments and all that, Teapot 11 at last fully showcased Brace Kitty's capability to do this. We just keep searching, Pencil! Go, go, go! We gotta restart! Stack, stack, stack! Wait! Everyone, jump, jump, jump! Isn't she the most adorable leader you've ever seen? In general, she should spread a laser focus on the escape plan in this episode, but of course, never completely forgetting what matters to her most. It wasn't very big, but uh, Ice Cube! I think this episode pretty much proved this entire aspect of Bracelet's personality exists. And it only took one episode of a mildly good amount of screen time to achieve a whole new dimension to her character. Wow! Can you believe it? Imagine if she... Oh, I don't know. Rejoin the show! Let's see, what else? If you're into silly characters, he's also an absolutely, completely silly goose. Use every digit of pie that I know! What? All things considered, the character she can be regardless of Ice Cube, and the character she can be in relation to Ice Cube, I think Bracey should really get a second shot. Let's talk in hypothetical exit region mode. There might be 11 characters in the run in here, but let's be realistic. Out of everyone, it's a pretty safe assumption that unless something that sways viewers significantly happens, just like in the United States, there's only two real candidates, Bracity and Lai. The polls don't lie, folks. A boat that doesn't go towards one of these two is probably a boat that won't do much. Maybe Pencil and Match have a shot since they're pretty popular too, but I'd like to recall what I said about four years ago. Match arrived at the exit, and some Alliance fans that voted Pencil previously will instead vote for Match and split up the votes. And after all she's had to go through, by far one of the characters that has suffered the most in BFDI history, with some favorable boat counts, being the contestant with least episodes of participation in the competition, <coughs> having her peers and team disrespect her before and after her elimination, having Leafy use the drawing she wanted to get to Ice Cube as a tissue and throwing it away in BFV 11, having her idol watch as she fell back into the exit while Lucer and Spongy rejoined without viewer intervention just for them to leave almost immediately. I don't know. I think it's time we throw poor old Bracity a bone. I think that she'll pretty much address most points made against her character I find most important. There's still stuff like, oh but well she's annoying, and I mean, there's not much I can do about those opinions considering their subjective nature. You know, peak is not for everyone. And trust me, I could have made this more detailed than I did. But again, the pot 12 is coming soon, and I should know the Exodus might have their first shot to reaching for the first time in 6 years. 
So my apologies if the video seems a bit rushed in that regard, but hopefully you got my main objective points across. Some of you may still be wondering why I'm such a huge fan. I mean, a lot of the points I made today stem from the newer episodes when I was a fan since before VFV13 even came out. You know, with the creation of the Bracelet Inquisition Discord server during 2020, with that solo geometry hash level that took me a hundred hours to build, winning a nationwide high school game channel under the name Team Ice Cube. You think that the character will have had what, more than 5 minutes of screen time? But I don't know. Perhaps that's a topic for another day. And I mean it, it's truly hard to explain it. Uh, maybe I should have testing, I don't know. Anyways, thanks for reaching the end of this video. If I somehow pull this video off before the release of Deepal 12, then you're watching an actual miracle. But, you know, that's just the power of racery right there. It makes miracles. I'd like to give a huge thanks and shout out to Fel, SonicBoom363, Eli Gavret, Fava, SuperSonico, Trollsy, and QKitty for helping me with the production of this video. There was no way I could have finished this video in time if I didn't get any help. So their links and all the stuff is in the description. And also the songs used during this video are present in the description too, in order of appearance. And yeah. That's pretty much it. Name's Nacho, and I'll see you another day, maybe? I don't know.